So Tatiana Arrington, where is the Buzz TV? And I'm here with Anna Kali- Hannah Kalik Brown. Let me start that over. <laughs> Tatiana Arrington, where is the Buzz TV? And I'm here with Hannah Kalik Brown. How are you today? I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing good. So I got a chance to watch The Undeclared War because I know it was out in the UK and now it's coming out in the US. So we're all very excited. Um, But I want to talk to you a little bit about your journey as an actress, because I actually read that you emailed 1,000 casting directors and agents that completely went unanswered, but you know, you obviously didn't give up. So I would love to know a little bit more about your career journey. Yeah, it it was actually... I emailed one hundred about 180, mm-hmm. but I emailed them three times a year for two years, which totals to about... Gotcha. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but everyone sees that headline and they think <laughs> I'm absolutely insane. And, and maybe I am, maybe 180 is insane too. But um, yeah, I the hustle was real. <laughs> An unrepresented actor is a, is a dangerous thing. I was... Um, yeah, I, I I was trying to kick the door down. I didn't go to drama school. I didn't have any kind of family connections to the business or anything. So I I just did what I could, which was put on fringe theatre in, in London, um, off West End theatre, really crappy plays and, and not getting paid at all. And just trying to get people to come and watch me because I knew I could do it. And I knew that I knew what I can do with my career but I just need someone to let me in (laughs) and eventually they did um I I finally got seen by uh, at a showcase for um black Asian and other ethnically diverse actors uh, which was set up by a guy called Suraj Shah in the UK he's an Asian actor um South Asian actor and um I was finally seen I did a monologue and in front of actually quite a lot of the agents and casting directors that I'd been emailing for the past two years. And um, I got a few offers after that. And I, I went with my agent, Fiona, who's amazing. And I started working the following week auditioning and the rest is history. It was only I think, maybe like a, a year after, less than a year after I signed with my agent that I got the audition for The Undeclared War. So it happened quite fast after that. I mean, some people you said earlier may look at that as you're insane. I like to think of it as dedication, determination, you know, not giving up. <laughs> um, so your character in the show is a hacker. So how did you prepare for your role? Because I imagine that's very different than your day to day life. Yeah, very. Couldn't be more different. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of did my I had two routes of prep. So I did I had my acting prep, which is a whole other thing, um, which was, you know, kind of I did that a lot across the year of auditioning and I, it's quite intense work. But I also had the prep of, like you say, like she's a hacker, she's a coder and she happens to also be a genius. So it's like couldn't really couldn't be further from me, uh, who's just like not in that world at all, doesn't know anything about coding. Um, And Peter, the writer director, he he rang me a few days after I got the role and he was like, "Uh, so you know how she's like a a genius and a coding prodigy. Um, Do you think maybe you should like familiarize yourself with it? And I I'm like you say determined so I I kind of took the challenge and I I taught myself how to code and I I learned two programming languages wow and you taught yourself yeah I did an online course and I Uh did some myself with it I I taught myself JavaScript and then C++ and uh, I loved it uh, for about two months working on it working on some little projects and I also watched like a, an, an online lecture course for reverse engineering which is the type of hacking that she's doing at GCHQ mm-hmm. I can't do reverse engineering but I, I <laughs> learned about it <laughs> and I was I, gonna say how well versed do you think you are now after <laughs> not zero in reverse engineering but I, I I know JavaScript and I know C++ I should practice I I haven't practiced in a long time and any coders watching will be like the only way you can get better is by practicing and doing projects which I know but if we get a season two I will practice more I promise (laughs) I mean that's even incredible that you took the initiative to even want to learn how to code and uh try to learn reverse engineering like very complicated stuff (laughs) <laughs> um, so you know I only scratched the surface but I actually really enjoyed it I, it's really satisfying stuff and what do you think that you learned besides that from your from your character throughout this uh throughout the show filming the show 
so much um because me and sarah we're really different um we're really not, it's funny like peter always jokes about this saying how we're really not similar and i'm always <laughs> like, yeah, i'm an actor peter <laughs> that's what i do but it's um yeah i learned loads from sarah i learned so much about acting actually from the process um it was a huge education for me the whole thing I learned so much about about loving your character and about trusting yourself, trusting the people around you, trusting um, your relationship with your character to see you through. I, I learned loads about other ways of thinking. We think really differently. Um, I learned a lot about myself too. There's some things that we are really similar on. Like we're both, we both really love proving people wrong when we're underestimated and, and we both really um, love being driven and having high ambitions and high expectations for ourselves but I learned so much loads from about acting because the people I was working with it was like a master class every day on set just like watching Mark Rylance work and I was like notes 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say you got you were working with some big heavy hitters in this show right. like you know, from Simon Pegg to uh, Maisie, what yeah. what are some of the uh, behind the scenes things that you can tell us about shooting the undeclared war? I mean, can you imagine my my brain when I saw those names on the call sheet? I was like, ah, no, <laughs> can't be real. Yeah, remain um, calm, remain calm. Yeah. Try not freak everyone out by screaming. Um, it was, yeah, I, I mean. Working with all of them was amazing. Simon Pegg, who who plays Danny in GCHQ in, in the Undeclared War, he's genuinely one of the funniest people I've ever met. He's he's hilarious, and and it was a really long shoot with long hours, hard, like emotionally demanding work, and and Simon would make me pee myself laughing in between takes, which I needed so badly because there's like traumatic stuff going on in right. this scene, and it's heavy, it's tense, it's gripping, it's like. You, you don't stop the show you don't pause in this show there's no like chill moment it's it's like intense so you, I was watching it like like yeah. like, <laughs> like, like, like tense I, super tense I can and, imagine I needed Simon to like make me laugh and he did and he was brilliant and and Maisie as well we had such a wonderful wonderful friendship growing throughout this um she's become like a sister to me I, I absolutely adore her and she's taught me so much about about what it is to be a woman in this industry and and you know how to how to navigate the industry as well as acting you know there's so much about this industry that you have to learn as you go and she's been a massive kind of guide in so many ways for me and we we were just giggling and and having the best time and and Mark was just an angel working with Mark uh he's just he's like he's from another planet he's like a fairy and I, <laughs> I I have this kind of this book that I take everywhere with me that I write down everything I learn about acting mm-hmm. on and off set all the time and usually I kind of write privately in my green room or like in um, in the car on the way back from work or before the day starts. Uh, but with Mark, I would just take it on set and ask him questions and just write down the answers because I was like, this is not going to happen again. I need to get the wisdom. I mean, absolutely. I would. I would just be up there interviewing everyone like, hey, can I just get your perspective on this, on that? Well, my last, <laughs> for my last question, I wanted to ask, why do you think uh audiences will get hooked to the undeclared war like it's already premiered in the UK people love it they're super excited about it um and I know a lot of the themes are very prevalent in what's going on in the world today so what do you think about this particular show is going to hook audiences I think that I mean the story is incredibly gripping it's very tense it's a thriller it's a political thriller but it's very much a thriller I think people will be really um gripped by the the storylines to do with Russia to do with misinformation disinformation bot farms um you know fake news to do with election rigging to do with spies um I think people will also be really interested in the personal I mean it follows this young woman and and all of her worlds kind of go into crisis at the same time and it's it's really thrilling to watch somebody brilliant and flawed and complex try and survive something so crazy going on all at once um but I think it will appeal to American audiences I really hope so I've been so thrilled with the reception over here and I can't wait to see what you guys think oh I'm, I mean they're gonna love it I definitely enjoyed it you were phenomenal so congratulations again now they're definitely like I said 
you're gonna be all, just a little tense, tense. But, <laughs> but it is very very enjoyable to watch so congratulations again and thank you so much for your time Thank you. Bye. Where is the buzz? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said we used to be a singer. Oh, oh, oh.